Hello to all of our friends in St James's. Thank you very much again for joining us for another one of our recorded messages. We trust that everyone is keeping well and it's our prayer that as you listen uh, to these lovely hymns and to the gospel message being preached that it will be a blessing uh, to your soul. Now as we like to do we're going to start with a hymn. It's number 18 in the little booklet here. Um, it says, Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcomed his birth. Glory to God in the highest, peace and good tidings to earth. This is a, a lovely hymn and we hope that you'll enjoy listening to it as we sing it for you.
Leslie Emerson uh, just before Leslie comes to speak and share the word of God let's just take a moment and pray our God and our loving Father in heaven we come into thy presence another time and we give thanks for all of thy goodness our Father we give thanks for these beautiful hymns that we can sing we give thanks uh, for hymns which tell us of the Lord Jesus who came our Father we give thanks that thou didst ever send thy son into the world we praise thee that his purpose in coming was that he might become a saviour. We give thanks that thy word records that for all you was born this day in the city of David a saviour, which is Christ the Lord. Our Father, we give thanks for one who went to the cross. We give thanks for one who has borne our sins. And Father, we just pray now that as Leslie would open thy word and seek to tell again of the saviour, we just pray that his word would be blessed give him help and uh, we pray that he would know thy presence with him and our father we pray that thy word would be blessed we pray for all of our friends in st james's father for the residents and for the staff we commit each one of them into thy care we give thanks for them and we just pray that if there are any who are listening to this message who as yet have not put their faith in the lord jesus christ we pray that through hearing this message father they might uh, be saved and put their trust in the Lord Jesus. Father, we give thanks that it's possible. We give thanks that the gospel is a message for anyone and for everyone. And we just pray that it would be blessed as it's preached again. Father, we look to thee for thy help and give thanks again for all thy goodness. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, it's good to be with you again this Christmas season. And uh, I'm going to read uh, a verse from the Bible and then uh, speak uh, to you for 10 minutes or so. I'm going to read a verse well known in Matthew chapter 1 and it's in verse number 21 and the verse says and uh, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Let's read it again and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Uh, it's Christmas time and we remember why the Lord Jesus Christ was, was born uh, and this verse helps us focus on the why he was born because it says that he will save his people from their sins. So let's not forget that. You know I enjoy Christmas. I enjoy time with our family and, and friends and I enjoy time off from work and uh, uh, it's nice to get gifts and nice food and all of those things and it's easy to forget what the true meaning of Christmas is and that verse would help us focus that he shall save his people from their sins and I find myself at this time of the year I often read the first couple of chapters of Matthew and the first couple of chapters of Luke on a regular basis you know the purpose uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ coming into this world would, was that he would be our saviour they shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins he would be our saviour and he would bring uh, sal salvation and you know Christmas is only half the story that's when the Lord Jesus Christ came but because the, he came there was purpose and there had to be an Easter when the Lord Jesus Christ when he would die and he would rise again from the dead he would go to the cross and he would burn away your sin and mine you know I've been reading in, in the opening chapters of Luke and uh, in the first two chapters of Luke there are four songs recorded there's a song of mary there's a song of zachariah there's a song of the angels and there's a song of an old man called uh, simeon and i want to speak on the four songs and each of them uh, make reference to the fact that the lord jesus christ came as a savior and to bring uh, salvation mary we know lots uh, about mary we know that the angel appeared to mary in the hometown of nazareth and told her that she would conceive a child born uh, or a child by the Holy Spirit let me read verses 32 and 33 of Luke chapter 1 and it says verse 31 and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus there we have it again he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall grant to him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be uh, no end you see the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, was born into this world like many other babies uh, 
And so he was like us, he was human, but he was very much unlike us in this. He didn't have a human father like you and I have. It says he was conceived of the Holy Spirit. He was God's son, he was deity, he was, he was the word became flesh. Uh, and that's what a verse we read in John, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I want to read a verse of a, a well-known Christmas carol, Hark the Earl of Angels Sing is the carol that we all know. And there's a verse in that that tells us how God came down to earth. It says, Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb, veiled in flesh the God had see, heal the incarnate deity, pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. When the Lord Jesus Christ was born, he was Emmanuel, God with us. God had come from, from heaven to earth. He'd come from eternity into time. So let's never forget that the baby who was born in Bethlehem, the Lord Jesus Christ, he was God manifest in flesh. As we've read on the story, it tells us that, that Mary goes off to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was also expecting a baby at that time. And they spend some time together, probably a few months. And, uh, and while she was there, Mary, she sings a song and it says, and we can read it later in the, in the Gospel of Luke, in chapter one, and it says, one of the lines of that is, it says, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Saviour. The spirit, my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Saviour. Mary was the, Lord, was the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet she realized that even in her privileged position as his mother, the Bible calls her blessed, that she too needed a Saviour. Imagine that. The mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, she too needed a saviour. And the truth we need to learn is that we're all sinners. And none of us are any different. We all need a saviour. And that is why the Lord Jesus Christ came. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my saviour. The second person we come to who sang a song, his name was Zachariah. Now Elizabeth that we spoke about, the cousin of Mary, uh, Zachariah was Elizabeth's husband. And some months before, an angel had appeared to him in the temple while he was working there. And they said that you're going to have a son and you're going to call his name John. Now you may have heard of John the Baptist. That's who uh, this was. Uh, and, uh, but Zacharias, Zachariah didn't believe the angel. And so the angel said, well, if you don't believe until the child is born, you're going to be dumb and you're not going to be able uh, to speak and, you know, uh, Zachariah had to motion them when he came out of the temple and he couldn't speak and he was had to write things down because he couldn't speak and so uh, sometime later sometime between maybe nine months and 12 months later uh, their son John uh, was born and so when John is or when Zacharias uh, and Elizabeth when they give birth to a son they name him John and at that moment because Zachariah had read his name. They gave him a writing tablet and he said, his name is John. They wanted to call him some, something else because they said, there's no one in your family called John. Why would you call him John? But the angel had said his name is John and, and Zachariah wrote it down. And at that moment, he got his voice back again. And he, these are the words uh, that he wrote. These are among my favorite uh, words in all of the Bible. And it says that his words were, blessed be the Lord God of Israel for he hath visited and redeemed his people. We skip a few verses and then it says, and he speaks about his own son. He says, and thy child, that is John, shall be called the, the prophet of the house, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation. There we have it again. Unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. The title of the Lord Jesus Christ, the day spring uh, from on high you know it says that he he came to visit us you know uh, you know we all go to visit places at times sometimes we go to visit on our holidays sometimes we go to visit friends and maybe at christmas time uh you leave the home and go to visit some some of your relatives or friends and, and you'll enjoy being there you know there's always a, a, a purpose for why you go and the lord jesus christ when he came to this earth it tells us that he came uh, with purpose. You know, he knew that he would be born into a poor home. He knew that he would become a carpenter working with 
his father. He knew he would live among ordinary people and he knew that by and large he would be rejected. It says that in John's Gospel we, we read that he came unto his own and his own, that's his own people, and his own people, they received him not. Imagine that, the Lord Jesus Christ coming into this world uh, to, to love us and to give his life for us and by and large he was rejected. He came as the fulfillment of God's promises and he was Christ uh, the Messiah. You see the Old Testament wrote about the Lord Jesus Christ that he would come and he would come into uh, this, this, this world that we live in. You see the, whole, the Old Testament was full of those uh, prophecies that said that there was one who would come. And when the Lord Jesus Christ was here on earth, one day when he was in his 30s, early 30s, he went to, went to his hometown, Nazareth, where he had been brought up. They knew him there. He had been a carpenter there. He went to school there. He went to the synagogue there. And this day he went into the synagogue and they handed him the scroll. Uh, they didn't have Bibles like we have nowadays. They had scrolls. And they handed him the scroll and the place where it was opened was in the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 61. And this is what... The Lord Jesus Christ, he read, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, and he said, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your hearing. And yet they rejected him. And there was only a few he would accept the Lord Jesus Christ uh, when he came. You know, just before he went to the cross, it tells us in Luke chapter 19 that one day he went out over the city of Jerusalem and he wept. Why did he weep? Because they had rejected him, even though he had shown them love and concern and had come uh, to forgive their sins. Remember, it says in those verses that we read that, the, that he had come, the Lord had visited and redeemed his people he said that day the people in their rejection it says that they knew not the time of his visitation they didn't recognize and acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ had come uh, for them and so we have Zachariah and his son then we have the angels and the heavenly hosts you know the first people to learn of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ were the, were the shepherds they were minding their own business and and taking care of their sheep and maybe we're lying down for the night uh, to go to rest and all of a sudden the sky filled up and uh, there was angels and says that they were afraid oh, I think you would be as well and I would be if all of a sudden uh, we got a heavenly visitor in the night sky and uh, and of course the angel said do not fear and here's what the, the angel said we can read it in Luke chapter 2 and verse 10 uh, and 9 10 and 11, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. Verse 13 and 14, And suddenly was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. Great joy to all the people. Why? Because a Saviour is born. You know, the first people... Who heard the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ being born were humble shepherds. It wasn't those who lived in palaces and it wasn't the great religious leaders of the day. It was humble sh shepherds. And that tells me that salvation is for all men. Humble shepherds 2,000 years ago. And you and I who live in Balamoni in Northern Ireland in December 2023. Salvation is for all men. And the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ was born wasn't just for that day. It's for all time and stretches down now and throughout all eternity that God loves each one of us and the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, came uh, into our world for all men. I wonder, as we approach another Christmas day, do we rejoice that the Lord Jesus Christ came as our Saviour? So we have the song of Mary, of Zachariah, and and the, uh, uh, the angels and the heavenly host. And finally, we have Simeon. We're not told that Simeon, uh, we're not told his age, uh, but we, we can, uh, from what we read in the scripture, we believe he was uh, an old man and that soon he would die. 
it seems that he spent quite a lot of his time in the temple and he was one uh, who, who, who knew the Old Testament scriptures and he knew that written in the Old Testament scriptures were the promises that God would send a saviour, a messiah. You know, there were very few people who were expecting the Lord Jesus Christ to come, but Simeon was one of them. And he seemed to live his days in the hope and the, of the promise of the scriptures of the Old Testament that the Lord Jesus Christ would come. He, he had studied the scriptures and, and, and God had said in his word through the prophets that one would come. In fact, uh, God had told him, I don't know whether through a dream or some other way, God had told him, you know, Simeon, you're looking for the promised one. You're not going to die until you see him. And so, uh, you know, he didn't know the Christmas carol because it wasn't written then, but he could, if he had known it, he would have sung it. It says, O come thy day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. You know, Simeon was looking uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ to come, the promised uh, Messiah. But one day into the temple comes Mary and Joseph, and with this little baby, and Simeon just knew at that moment, this is the one. And then he says, here's what he says in his song. He said, Lord, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. And Simeon was saying, Lord, I can die happy now. I've seen the one. And he said, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. There it is again in his song. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which has prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. That covered everybody, the Jews and the Gentiles. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. And it tells us uh, that, that he praised God. You know, Simeon, old Simeon, he didn't know all that would happen to the Lord Jesus. Uh, but one of the things that, that he did tell his mother Mary, he said, a sword shall pierce thy own sword. A, sorry, a sword shall pierce thine own soul also. And he was saying, Mary, you're going to have sorrow in your life because of the one who was born. It says that, that uh, uh, you can read it a couple of times that Mary thought about these things and, and uh, I wonder did she realise what it meant. You know, fast forward 33 years and the Lord Jesus Christ is hanging up on the cross and Mary is there watching her own son die upon the cross. I'm sure she thought of the words of Simeon that day, a sword shall pierce thine own soul also. What sorrow it was for, for Mary eh, that day to watch her own son die upon the cross. But that was the price of salvation. That's what it took eh, for, for God to save any one of us. The Lord Jesus Christ, he had to go to the cross and he had to die and to bear away your sin and mine. What a journey the Lord Jesus Christ took from heaven to earth from eternity into time, and what it would mean for him uh, to go to the cross and there to bear away your sin and my sin. You know, I want to quote a, another hymn, a verse of another hymn. It's not a Christmas carol, but it, it, uh, it just helps us to understand something of the great love of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ for each of us. Behold a man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders, Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath had brought me life. I know that it is finished. And so we have the Saviour who would come via the virgin's womb and to visit earth with purpose to go to the cross and to provide salvation for all men, for you, for me. What about each of us, you and me? Have we welcomed the Lord Jesus Christ as Simeon did? Have we rejoiced as the shepherds did? And have we acknowledged him as Saviour as Mary did? I do trust that as you think of the Lord Jesus Christ at Christmas, you'll remember that he came as a Saviour and he came to bring salvation for each one of us, and for me and for you. Thank you and I wish you a happy Christmas. There we are.